Chairman Governing Council NID, Dr. Noshad Forbes, is the co-chairman of the Forbes Marshall Group, India's leading steam engineering and control instrumentation firm, and chairs the steam engineering companies within the group. He has been a lecturer and consulting professor at Stanford University for a program in science, technology, and society. We now invite Chairman Governing Council NID, Dr. Noshad Forbes, for his presidential address. Ladies and gentlemen, students, good evening. This is an occasion to celebrate your achievements and those of the National Institute of Design. NID's commitment to excellence in design, in design education, design practice, design thinking, makes it indeed a privilege to congratulate all of you graduating today. Ever since our foundation 27 years ago, uh, I was founded about the same year, NID has been the country's premier design institute. Almost any design institute, design consultancy, and design department in the country owes its origins to NID and its graduates. And this is now directly beginning to spread too. NID Vijaywada has successfully completed two years of operation and NID Kurukshetra one year, both with NID's, NID Ahmedabad's active management. And our new PhD program has begun here in Ahmedabad and will in time spread the excellence of NID Ahmedabad around the country. 327 students have graduated today. You have demonstrated great capability in study and in work and can go on to achieve much, <laughs> to contribute in a major way towards our economic and social development. Your achievements come from great faculty seated here on this stage, but they also come from the support of great parents. So in a developing tradition at the NID convocation, I would encourage all of you graduating students today to stand up, to turn around, and to cheer all those, of, all those who've made this day possible for you. Thank you. However much we have achieved so far in design, our task is truly enormous. In the meeting that we had earlier today of the Governing Council, many of our illustrious members stressed how, how we need to massively scale to impact the country, such that 1.3 billion people see a difference in their lives as a result of what design can bring to them. Whether what it brings to them is better products, or better public spaces, a better environment, we need to scale massively. Design overall needs to be a much larger enterprise in the country. Let me give you just a few numbers which I've stolen from Pradyumna. We produce around 5,000 designers in our country each year from 70 design institutes. Compare that number of 5,000 designers with three other numbers. First, with 1.5 million engineers that we produce each year right here in our country. So design in that sense, in terms of total output, is a tiny drop in the broader pool of engineers that we produce at home. Compare that 5,000 again with 25,000 designers that South Korea produces each year a country with a population that is 3% of India's. And compare that 5,000 with the number of 300,000 engineers, desi sorry, designers that China produces each year, a country with a very similar population to ours. Even more, if you look at the number of designers who work in industry, 
In South Korea, about 20,000 designers work for different design consultancies. But over 240,000 designers work for user firms. And this user firm population is what creates a demand for design around the country. So it is essential for us to raise the priority of design in industry as our first goal. South Korea and China are the two countries that I've used for comparisons. Because they are, in the last 10 to 30 years, they are the countries that have most explicitly tried to scale design as a way of achieving many other good objectives, as a way of having more successful firms come out with better products, more proprietary products, of trying to use design to improve their public spaces such that people have healthier and better lives, and of trying to use design in many different aspects of life. Not only do we need to scale, but we need to scale with quality. And that is where you all come in. Great institutes all around the world have excellence in the faculty, and they have excellence in the students. The many awards that we heard of in Pradyumna's review of faculty winning international and national awards, and the students who've participated and won international and national awards is testimony for that. This combination of excellence in faculty and students shows up in a variety of ways. It shows up in the excellence of one's curriculum, in the excellence of the research that's done, the excellence of the student exhibition that we enjoy each year on this day. You are the way we as a country can scale with quality. NID exposes you to what is good quality even when you aren't being taught. Take the example of this wonderful graduation ceremony. Whether it's the elegant and beautiful graduation dress that we all wear, or whether it's this magnificent setting that we are all privileged to be a part of. It's these details that make the difference in excellence. And these details state excellence powerfully. They teach us what quality means and the quality message that we need to take everywhere. Excellence is truly in the water here at NID. And it is our responsibility as students, as faculty, as governing council members, and as other well-wishers of NID to keep it that way. Another message. You know, this is the last day of your lives when you're only going to be at the receiving end of messages. From tomorrow, you can start giving them too. Last year, I had the great pleasure of visiting the Calico Museum here in Ahmedabad. I think it's one of the world's most unique and great museums. It demonstrates so powerfully the greatness of our aesthetic traditions in the country, the greatness of our craft traditions, and certainly the greatness of our textile traditions. But the question is, why with this past greatness, why does India not lead the world in textiles today? How do we bring together our great strengths and great traditions of the past and apply them through modern design to creating a new future for us as a society? Can we create great design-led companies together, and hundreds of them? We need to bring together great design with great scale, great design with great manufacturing, and great design with great entrepreneurship. I hope many of you new graduates will be a part of this project of bringing great design to entrepreneurship, great manufacturing to the arts and crafts in our country, and great crafts to modern industry. It is that that can enable us to scale and impact the world. Our chief guest today is Pranab Mukherjee. He greatly regrets being unable to be with us in person, but he has had to remain in Delhi, recovering from a bad cold and cough. There are many reasons why the Governing Council thought he would be an ideal chief's guest. He has, of course, been one of our most distinguished politicians, but that's not why we invited him. 
Instead, we sought him as an exemplary precedent. Some men and women are found wanting in high office. Some rise to the high office, but some by their words and deeds raise the highness of the office itself. Pranab Mukherjee is in that third rare category. As president of CII last year, I had the privilege of sharing a stage with him on many occasions. On every occasion, the occasion was raised not only by his presence, but by the content of his speech, the breadth of his vision, the demonstration of all that we must live up to as a country, and our essential essence, our diversity, our tolerance, our balance, our decency. Overall, he has lived an exemplary life of public service, a model for us all to emulate. So a final closing comment. To me, life is all about three principles. First, loving what you do. If you don't love what you do, you should change what you do. By choosing design, not a conventional choice, and I'm sure many of you had to convince your parents that this was a good choice that you were making when you decided to start studying design. By choosing design, you've demonstrated that principle of loving what you do. Second, making a difference. And to do so with design, we have to scale our impact in quantity and quality in everything from products to public space. And third, there must be a public purpose for our actions. People must be better off because we're there. And I think Pranab Mukherjee's example of public service should inspire us to do the same. I wish you a life of joy, a life of making a difference, of loving what you do, a life of public purpose, and a life of great beauty and great design. Congratulations again, and thank you. Thank you, sir, for that very inspiring address.